All right, welcome uh, back to uh, lesson 17. And we ended with a, a goal that we wanted to achieve to convert words to vectors. So we need words to be presented in a vector space. Now, this could be a vector space, and here you have the vector cat. So, um, there's many ways on how to convert words into vectors, and we've seen one methodology, which I would call a clumsy, not a very efficient methodology, and that is one-hot encoding. And what is one-hot encoding? Well, basically, for every word in your vocabulary, you're going to make a vector. And every word is going to be assigned an index in that vector. So if your vocabulary V is 7,500 words, then you're going to start with W1, and here the first index, the first row will be a 1. This is going to be your first word, likely starting with an A. And then you all go all the way down to word 7,500, and this will have a 1 at the bottom of this vector. Likely a word starting with Z. Yeah. Um, so basically what you have is you have vectors of length of 7,500 and you have a vocabulary of 7,500 words. So this is a 7,500 by 7,500 matrix of information. Um, but this allows you basically to convert a sentence into a sequence of numbers. Yeah. So these are um, related to specific numbers and as you can see I have six twice here. Six could for example um, uh, represent a stop word yeah, that you will see frequently. The disadvantage of one-hot vector methodology is that you have long and sparse vectors. So there's going to be a lot of, of waste in terms of zero in uh, 7,499 of these rows are going to be zero, right? So it, it also consumes memory. So it's not very memory friendly. Then the other issue uh, we have is that there is no notion of similarity between these vectors. Because if you take word i and you take the dot product with word j, yeah, you're going to have zero. Why? Well, take 1 and 2 here, i is 1, j is 2, you have 1 times 0 is 0, right? And then plus 0 times 1 is 0, and then plus 0 times 0, right? So in the end, it's going to give you 0. So there is no notion of similarity between words. They're all independent and very different from each other. Another issue we have here is that there's no notion of meaning. Yeah, I give you an example here. Assume you have a text, and that text has the sentence, Billy loves to drink orange juice. And then you try to predict this word here, Mary loves to drink something juice. Yeah. So what you expect here is that you get some fruit like apple juice or pineapple juice. Yeah? The chance of having another fruit is way higher than uh, a word like, for example, car. Yeah? Drink car juice doesn't really work. Well, in one hot vector encoding, all words have the same probability of appearing. Yeah? So, that is, that is the issue you're going to have here. The question mark being uh, apple has the same probability as car. Yeah? So it's, it's not really uh, what we want. All right, in order to solve all this, there are word embeddings. Yeah? We will look at word embeddings, we'll look at word to vec and at glove. And in word to vec, we have two types we have continuous bag of words and we have skip grant. And we'll talk about this in, uh, in just a few minutes. But what is the idea? Well, the idea is 
that you define a vector space, remember here, where similar words are close to each other. So here you have the word similar and you have the word close. Yeah, very important. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have our vocabulary again in the horizontal um, direction. So here you're going to have your 7,500 words. And on the, on the row uh, axis, we're basically going to define features. And these features will allow us to shrink the dimensionality of this famous matrix. We've done something very similar when we discussed about recommender systems. Remember, we had movies, movie 1 all the way to movie 5. And we had users, user 1 all the way to user 4. This matrix here, we call the rating matrix. And that was a 4 by 5 matrix. Not very, I would say, efficient because a lot of these rows and uh, columns uh, will be dependent. Yeah. So one way to solve this is that you get, you define two features: features one, feature two, and this could be, for example, a thriller or a romance movie. And then you connect your five movies to these two features and at the bottom you have your four users. So in this case you have 5 times 2 is 10 and here you have 4 times 2 is 8. So here you have 18 in terms of uh, memory positions. So re you reduce the dimension by doing this. And we're going to do exactly the same here so we define features and then we score these words uh, on these features. So I have the words man, woman, king, queen, apple, orange. We look at gender. Uh, let's say that for a male gender we have minus one and for female gender we have plus one. King is a male, queen is a female, so they're going to be very close to minus one and one. These two are fruits have really no gender. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of very small probabilities. I'm not gonna write there 0 0.001, I'm just gonna put zero, yeah? In terms of food, while well, these four are people, they are no food, yeah? Unless uh, some of the apple uh, variants are called king or something, but that's not the case. Let, let me just put uh, zeros everywhere and two numbers close to one uh, for apple and orange. Um, then we have another feature, fruit. Yeah, fruit is also food. But here apple and orange will score a bit higher. Yeah, where there is no score for these people. Then color. Uh, orange is 0.9 because orange is definitely a color. And actually, we could put it higher than 0 0.9. It could be 0 0.98, 99. Apple is not a specific color, but sometimes people use mm, the color is apple green. Yeah. So there is some score we give here, 0 0.3. And then we have the final feature, for example, hair. Well, we're going to assume, and this means hair on the head, we're going to assume that for a man it's lower than for a woman. Yeah. Um, so if we make about 300 of these features, my matrix suddenly becomes 300 by 7500. So we've reduced uh, from this to this, which is basically uh, a factor of roughly uh, 20, 20 plus. Yeah. Um, so I isolated two of these vectors here, I took the two fruits and you see that these vectors are relatively similar yeah? the only difference is here so here you can do a dot product and the dot product will be close to one because the vectors are pretty similar yeah? um, and they have a length of 300 in this case 
Yeah? So we solve similarity issue, we make the vector more dense, less sparse, and um, the meaning is also integrated. Yeah? By the scores we give these words on these uh, features. Now it's still a 300 dimensional uh, problem in this case 